In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have the cross in our midst because uh, we still celebrate the elevation of the Holy Cross, the universal exaltation. And we approach it as we see it in sight, falling down on our knees, two times kissing it and the third time bowing, and venerating the life-giving cross. There's an icon of the exaltation of the cross right there as well. And the cross is the object of our reflection today on the gospel lesson and the, uh, the epistle. Many of you watched the movie, The Man of God, about St. Nectarius. Many of you read the book of St. Nectarius. If you haven't done any of these, catch up, repent. The movie beautifully presents the story of this bishop in Egypt who was persecuted and slandered by the church. Jealous priests and bishops um, produced awful calumny against him and persecuted him for many years, for, the whole, for his whole life. We see St. Nectarius here bearing his cross at every moment of his life, wishing to come after the Lord, denying himself, taking up his cross and follow him. The cross was the cross of suffering from separation from his people of injustice, of persecution by the hand of the priests of the clergy. But I'm here to tell you today that the readings, both the epistle and the gospel, talk about at least two crosses. And we see this clearly in the life of St. Nectarius, a movie and a book that might be rejected by the Western mind of a Protestant frame, phronema, thinking, because the Western mind that unfortunately penetrates ourselves as well tells us that um, we are saved. And once we are saved, we enjoy the benefits of what St. Paul um, mentions here at the end of the passage today. The life now I live in the flesh is the life I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For the Western mind, the love of God is what's redeeming and salvific. And it produces a freedom that many times is untamed and expresses itself in passions and, and uh, if you wish, improper conduct. In the movie St. Nectarius, we see St. Nectarius bearing another cross, not just the one of the, of the persecution and slander, but the cross of purifying himself. St. Paul today, at the end of the passage, says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. St. Nectarius in the movie is such a clear example of crucifying himself for Christ, not only to stay like a lamb going to the slaughter, which is what this taking up of the cross means, to endure whatever suffering, sorrows, adversities, without complaining, without screaming, without running away. No, not only that. He did bear that cross. But beside that cross, Brothers and sisters, come out of the Western mindset. Enter now with St. Nectarius, the Orthodox Phronima. He picked up voluntarily, as the Lord did, the cross of purifying his heart, of purifying himself, himself of, the, of his passions, of the worldly influence, of his evil thoughts, of anger, of being away from God, of taking revenge, of running in a world that promised all kinds of things. No, he didn't give in to those. What did he do? What St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Remember in the movie St. Nectarius doing endless prostrations, falling down before the icons and praying day and night? This is what I'm talking about. How is that? Well, how is it for us to come to a service to be on time? 
or to come to the very celebration, the joyful celebration of the elevation of the cross. Partake of the joy of Empress Helena and Constantine, both having found and seen the cross, the sign of the cross in the, in the sky, shared with us. Is that hard? Well, the experience proves that it's extremely hard for some. And for most of us, community here, it's impossible to overtake because we don't participate in these things. So we look at St. Nectarius at all times, turned with a prayer up in his hands, bearing the voluntary cross of crucifying himself, for crucifying himself such that it's not longer his life, but Christ who lives in him. In our Orthodox language, we call this deification, theosis, to be one with Christ. When Christ lives in us, we're in him, we're in the kingdom. And the cross of God that we're called, we are blessed to venerate, and we still have in our midst here, is not just a reminder of what Jesus did for us, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, he did that. But that's not the end. Behind this, there's resurrection, there's ascension, there's a place by the Father, and there's the Holy Spirit that enables us to participate in all these. The Gospel lesson today tells us that there's nothing more important than to do this. This is what the Lord meant. What, for what does it profit a man to gain his whole world and forfeit his life? In the Greek language, life means soul as well. For what can a man give in return for his life, for his soul? What in the world, St. Nectarius might have thought, could be more important for me to deal with than to save my soul? And St. Nectarius said, the cross that these people put on my shoulders, which for us could be an illness, a child who's sick, a problem in the family, issues in school, too much homework, addictions, relationships that are stray, estranged. What can be more important than this, than my soul? Nothing. So St. Nectarius, a conscious decision lined up with the tradition of the church was to follow in the pattern of the church, the rhythm of the church. Take the cross of purifying himself, of ascesis, and thus, be victorious every single moment over the cross that the others put on his shoulders to crush him. The Lord said, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Brothers and sisters, we cannot follow Christ if we don't do these things. Look at your two crosses in your life. You might only find one. The cross of bearing the hardship. That's not the Christian life. There are people out there who are not Christian who bear lots of hardship away from Christ. But we're called here freely to follow him, to deny ourselves the bad habits, to root out the hard ties with the world, not to cherish bad thoughts and desires, to suppress evil thoughts, to avoid the occasions of sins, to do things out of love for God, not out of self-love. And as St. Paul says, to be dead to sin, but alive in God. And once we do this, to take up the cross and follow me, the cross of the ascetic life. The Western world, the Western ear doesn't hear this. That's why the life of St. Nectarius is uncomfortable for many out there. And maybe it's uncomfortable to you as I tell you this. St. Um, um, Theophan the Recluse, writing in one of the book that we read, uh, Catechumens Preparing for Today, The Path of Salvation, talks about this as in terms of self-opposition and self-forcing such that we do not give in to the desires of the heart and of the flesh, but force ourselves to go in the opposite direction, not to think the evil, but think the good, not to do the selfish, but to do the selfless. This takes effort. This takes sweat. 
This takes blood. This takes the cross, your cross and mine, to be crucified with Christ, such that He is the one living in us, not us. St. Theophan calls this the struggle of man with himself. This is the second cross that St. Nectarius beautiful displays to us. This cross of self-opposition and self-forcing to stay forgiving, loving, prayerful, alert, ready to die without judging, without abandoning the Lord. St. Theophan here talks about all of us, the repentant sinners, how we should be engaged in this struggle, labor, since um, Faisal is here. There's a Russian word for this, Slavonic, podvig, right? He points out that this struggle, this struggle of man with himself, the self-opposition and self-forcing to come out of the bad shell into the good track is so essential that all the saints accept the only true path to virtue to be pain and hard work. There's no other way to be sanctified, to find God, except through the path of pain and hard work. And again, they don't mean, he doesn't mean you getting sick because you got sick or getting in a car accident or having the, losing the job. No, 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 that's part of it. But the willing, the willing, the intentional um, engaging with a struggle of man with himself. In fact, anyone who is not struggling with this um, uh, self-opposition and self-forcing is in deviation from Christ. In other places, he says this is so essential that it makes us Christians. The one who doesn't engage in the struggle of the cross of the ascetic life is not a Christian. To cleanse and reform oneself is the task of the Christian life. And this, he says, St. Uh, Theophan, is like a sick person who needs cauterization or amputation. How can this be without pain? He wants to tear himself away from the captivity of strong enemy, but how can this be without struggle and wounds? He must walk counter to all the practices that surround him. And this is the cross that we're invited today to bear. What for? To preserve the health of the most important thing, our soul, our life, that money cannot buy. Once we lose it, it's gone. But it's saved because the Lord himself voluntarily went to the cross. The Gospel of St. Mark right before this passage tells us how the Lord tells the disciples now that he's going to go to the cross to suffer, to be mocked to be crucified. Peter says, oh no, Lord. The Lord tells him, go behind me, Satan, because you think with the mind of men, not with the mind of God. Right after this passage today, he tells them, truly, there are some of you standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. He's referring now to the transfiguration that follows immediately after this episode, where the Lord Christ showed them that what he said earlier, that he's going to be, he will go to the cross, be crucified to Golgotha, is a voluntary act. He embraced that voluntarily. Now, let us put this together. You bear the cross of hardship, of suffering, and adversities. That's one cross. How do we use this? How do we put this cross that God allows or maybe we inflict on ourselves to become the one in which and through which we experience the love of God who loved me, you and I, and gave himself for me? Remembering, Saint, uh, one of the theologians from Romania, Father Dumitru Stanilai, points out that God, Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, went to the cross voluntarily, freely, but also free of passions, free of the worldly concerns. Think of this. Whatever keeps you away from the cleansing, the purification mechanism of the church on Sunday mornings, on a royal feast days, whatever that is, 
could be family, could be work. For what, if, what, does, a prophet, what does profit a man who gained the whole world and forfeit his soul? That thing, think of it. So Jesus went to the cross free of these. He didn't think, he didn't say, God, Father, forgive me. I cannot go to the cross today because I'm tired. And he did not say, forgive me. I cannot go to the cross today because I have work to do. Or my family is in town. He did not. He freed himself from all these passions that keep us, him, could have kept him away from God as they keep us. And freely went to the cross. My cross is to come to become now like his, to bear his, to have him bear my cross as I follow him. And the fathers today and the readings teach us that this is done only when we too become free of the passions, free of the world, which is what it means with St. Paul here, I have been crucified with Christ to deny myself of everything that is worldly. Remember the Western freedom once is declared, I believe, I'm saved, I'm free. That's a false God that's worshipped there. The false approach to an understanding of Christ has done for us. Look at St. Paul. He's crucified with Christ. And that crucifixion of ours is of the passions. For us to become free of the passions and meet the Lord at the cross, being free of the passions as he is. This is what would mean to follow him, to take up the cross. To take up the cross. I'll close with a few examples here. I visited Sheila the other day. Sheila is known to us from our community. When I joined here seven years ago, she had the cancer. Her husband died as she was in the hospital with surgery of cancer. She came out of there almost, maybe two or three times, almost died because of diabetes, figures going through the roof. Countless strokes that disabled her physically in many ways. I haven't seen her in a while. She's now, I saw her in Modesto, having gone there for a funeral. Sheila bears a very heavy cross. Type 1 cross. I saw Sheila and she was radiant. I told her, Sheila, I don't think I've ever seen you so bright. After having COVID, almost died in the hospital for two weeks. Almost died. Still recovering, not having enough strength to lift herself up on the chair. How about that cross? Her mother died just a few months ago. She couldn't even see her at the time. How about that cross? But I said, you're radiant. Why? Because in her soul, she found a way to go to church, although she couldn't go to church physically. She was disabled to find Christ, to bear the cross of repentance, of prayer, of fasting, of renouncing what's worldly as much as she could. But God purifies, like, purifies those who suffer like gold in the furnace. What a beautiful living example there. You might not see her this way, but I did. Glory be to God. You know, I invite you to come to the catechist class. Talk about the heart. Today we'll talk precisely about these things here. Last time we had a long class. It was late, but not too late. All the catechumens stayed to talk. And something beautiful came out. Nikiforos, who is not with us here today, God watch over him. Student at the DLI, he has a very, they have a very heavy cross, these people, decided to tell us about St. Nikiforos. The catechumens didn't know much about him. We have an icon of St. Nikiforos there, showing him with white frozen, frozen hands, if you wish. And we learned about uh, St. Nikiforos, how he had leprosy, and that was meant for him. By the end of life, his body was eaten almost completely. But his soul, he was crucified, cross type 1. The St. Nikiforos crucified himself, cross type 2, always above the pain and suffering of leprosy. He embraced the self-opposition of the worldly things, of these passions. He, self, he self-forced, he forced himself not to be attached to the world, but to God. As we say, he was always on top of things. The result, the kingdom was revealed to us through him. People were coming to venerate him, to kiss his hand to get the blessing, to get words of wisdom till his last breath. It's a saint. 
This is what it means to be an Orthodox Christian, to bear this cross. So what is it for us to do? Catechumens, you've heard me before. St. Theophan the Recluse, today we'll talk about this a lot. When it comes to our mind, our will, and our feelings, our noose, to work on them, to uncover the noose, the part of the heart where God is present, tirelessly. That prayer rope, let it roll. That fasting, let it come in according to what the church does. We fast together. And how do we fast together? In assembly together. Remember that great and holy land? An event that is so powerful, so empty in the church. Think of how far we are and how westernized we are. The western mind that goes to church only once on Sunday and the rest doesn't exist. The church gives us the way to move forward, not just preserving the word of God and the gospel, but in the tradition, the lives of the saints, the way the gospel is understood, you see, like the, the lesson today of St. Paul, of Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, he did. But there's a condition for me to give himself to him as well. Let us glorify Christ, our God, whose body is assembled here today, partaking of his very resurrected body and blood in the Holy Communion. And let us intentionally, willingly desire to come after God, after Christ, follow him, denying ourselves the struggle that each and every one has with himself or herself to take up the cross of the ascetic life and follow him and thus overcome any hardship, any hard thing that he's, he might allow in our life. St. Theophan closes in one of his reflections. Rejoice as you feel the cross upon yourself. You see, the cross is to bring joy the joy of Elena, Helena and, and Constantine. Rejoice as you feel the cross upon yourself, for it is a sign that you are following the Lord on the path of salvation which leads to heaven. Rejoice as you feel cross number one, because you have cross number two. That's how you follow the Lord. Conscience, fulfillment of his commandments, according to the spirit of his instructions in the gospel. And St. Theophan says, Endure a bit. Endure. The end and the crowns are just around the corner. Amen.